Okay, glad that you're back today for our Thursday video. Uh, today is May the 7th, and we're continuing our series on the most inspirational disciple. Okay, so I hope you're enjoying this little tournament that we're doing, and I hope that you uh, are enjoying to vote, and uh, maybe the people that you're most inspired by uh, have uh, won and advanced to the next round. So uh, I hope you really, really enjoyed this, okay? So today we're going to be looking at two new people, and uh, one of them, his name is Matthias. We'll get into him in just a moment. And the other is Philip the Evangelist, okay? So I'll, we'll be talking about them today, and we'll be voting today on who we feel more inspired by of these two men from the New Testament. Now, um, just to give you a quick update of where we are in our tournament, we are now in what we're calling Region 2 or Section 2, okay? Uh, we've just divided the tournament up into little groups. We're still in the first round, okay? Uh, yesterday, we saw Barnabas and James, the son of Alphaeus. That is the only one in this section that we have voted on so far, okay? And uh, I'm going to leave you in a little suspense right now because uh, we still have, uh, we still have uh, a whole nother 24 hours before the voting will end. But I'm going to tell you that one of those two men is leading the votes 100% to 0%. Okay, so I'm going to let you think about that. Just in case you haven't voted, I don't want you to feel obligated to vote for the one who's in the big lead. Okay, so just please cast your votes if you haven't yet. And I will let you know that the winner of that will be uh, compared in the second round to the winner of today's video. Okay which is Matthias and Philip the Evangelist. Um, we'll also be seeing tomorrow's video, which will be Friday. We will be looking at Matthew and Mark. That'll be very interesting, two of the gospel writers. And then Monday's video, we will be seeing Peter and uh, Philemon, or Philemon, however you pronounce it. People pronounce it differently. So let's go ahead and begin our video by looking at Matthias. Okay, so who is Matthias? Well, um, I'm going to go ahead and jump right into this, and I'm going to write this on the board, okay? the uh, In Acts chapter 1. Judas Iscariot, the twelfth apostle, had betrayed Christ and had killed himself. Okay, it's a, it's a horrible story. But now, um, in Acts chapter 1, the apostles were trying to figure out who are we going to get to replace Judas Iscariot because Bible prophecy had predicted that God would fill the role of the 12th apostle when Judas betrayed Christ, that God would handpick someone to be the 12th apostle. Let me just remind you folks, when God called the 12 apostles, he picked them, not man. No one picked them but God himself, okay? But now in Acts chapter 1, the apostles decided that they were going to pick, okay? Now, please do not get a bad image in your mind of this man, okay? Um, um, I'll tell you why in just a moment. But he, uh, he is the man that they selected to take Judas Iscariot's place. So, he was, he replaced Judas Iscariot. Okay, he replaced Judas as an apostle. Okay, 
Now, um, as I said, folks, um, you know, please don't think anything bad of this man, but I'm just going to say that many people believe, and, and I am one of those people, I believe personally that Matthias was not the one so that was supposed to be the replacement, okay? Uh, for one thing, if you read Acts chapter 1, you will see the apostles rushed their decision. They basically picked two men and then asked God who of these two um, do you want as the replacement? You see, they got ahead of God a little bit. Uh, now, if you don't see it that way, it's okay. I mean, it's just uh, something I think, and a lot of people think that way. I personally believe God handpicked the 12th man in Acts chapter 9. God called this man the chosen vessel, and his name was the Apostle Paul. But anyway, Matthias became an apostle, but that's a great thing, folks, because in Jerusalem, which is where they were in Acts chapter 1, there were many, many disciples. There were many people to select to be the replacement. And out of possibly a hundred or more people, I think it may, be, may have been 200 selections, they picked Matthias. That is how big of a leader this man was, how respected he was, that, he, that people like Peter, James, and John said, we want you to be a partner with us. This was an incredible man, an incredible preacher who took on an incredible position. Now, if you read Acts chapter 1, you'll find out why they picked him. They didn't just say, oh, we like Matthias. They said that they needed someone who was an eyewitness of Jesus' ministry. They didn't want someone to be an apostle who didn't, who, who didn't see Jesus do what he did. They wanted an eyewitness. So, folks, I'm going to write that down, that Matthias was an eyewitness to Jesus' ministry. Okay? Okay? So, I'll tell you what that probably means. Okay? That he, how could he have seen everything that Jesus did? Okay, unless he was one of the twelve already. Well, I'll tell you why, folks. Because the Bible says in the Gospels that there were 70 other disciples, a specific number, 70, that also went with them to different places. Probably Matthias was one of those 70. That's probably the only way that he witnessed a lot of what Jesus did. Okay? Now, if you continue reading Acts chapter 1, um, you'll learn that it says Matthias was there at the baptism of John. John the Baptist, that is. Remember, early in the Gospels, John the Baptist was in the wilderness and he was baptizing people in the Jordan River. Well, it says that Matthias, not only had he witnessed the miracles of Jesus, but he was there at the beginning when John was baptizing in the wilderness. So what that probably means is that Matthias was one of of John the Baptist's disciples. Okay? Do y'all remember we've talked about that a little bit? John the Baptist had his own set of disciples, and then some of them eventually became 
some of Jesus' 12 disciples. Well, anyway, so if Matthias was present at the Jordan River and saw John baptizing, it's probably because, probably, I'm going to put that, P-R-O-B, probably he was a disciple of John the Baptist. Okay. So what that means is is that if nothing else, folks, Matthias was trained by the best and he witnessed everything firsthand that Jesus did in the ministry so much that in Acts chapter 1 the disciples could have picked anybody else Keep in mind, the Apostle Paul didn't get saved till Acts chapter 9. They could have picked anybody, but they selected this man, Matthias. And I'm going to end it with this. Matthias was martyred. Okay? He was martyred. Okay? You can almost just put that on every single person on this this series, okay? But we know that Matthias, according to history, uh, in about the year 80, he was stoned and then he was beheaded. That was a very common way that the Christians were killed in the first century. John the Baptist was beheaded. The Apostle Paul was beheaded. So was Matthias, okay? So he's a very inspiring person to learn about, okay? Now I'd like to talk to you about Philip the Evangelist. Now, folks, please remember, I must stress this. So many people get him confused with one of Jesus' 12 disciples. Do you remember what I'm talking about? There is a disciple named Philip. Okay, he is not this man. This is a totally different person. He appears in the book of Acts. Okay, now do you remember a few days ago we learned about Stephen? Do you remember Stephen? In the Jerusalem church, they selected seven men to be the first ever seven deacons. Seven men some of the most respected men in Jerusalem church. Well, Stephen was one of them, but this man, Philip the Evangelist, was one of those seven. So I'm going to write that up here. He was one of the first seven deacons. Okay. But folks, I like the story of Philip the Evangelist, and I'll tell you why. Because he started off as a deacon in the church, meaning he did, uh, he served God by taking care of issues in the church, such as visiting people or helping with the elderly or the poor or the widows. But God led him to leave the Jerusalem church in a good way to become a preacher. So it's a very interesting story. He was a deacon, then he became a preacher. How about that? Um, we're told in Acts chapter 8 that Philip the Evangelist went and had a ministry in Samaria. So I'm going to write that up here. He went to preach in Samaria. Okay. Now the reason that's so important is because... Folks, do you remember 
when Jesus talked to the Samaritan woman at the well. Do you remember that story, John chapter 4? The Jews did not talk to the Samaritans. If you were a Jewish person, you didn't go through Samaria. That's why the disciples didn't want to go in John chapter 4. But this man, Philip the Evangelist, he said, that's where God wants me to go. Even if it's to the enemy country of Samaria, he said, I'll go if that's where the Lord's leading me. You see, he didn't do like Jonah did in the Old Testament and ran from Nineveh. Philip the Evangelist went to Samaria and had a great ministry there. You can read about it in Acts chapter 8. But the most famous thing that Philip the Evangelist is known for is that one day God told Philip the Evangelist he was in the city of Jerusalem. He had made it back to Jerusalem, the big, big city. And God told Philip, the evangelist, to leave Jerusalem and go to the desert. Do you all know this story? You see, not many would want to do that today. They would say, oh, I'm in the big city. I'm in New York or I'm in Chicago. I'm not about to go to some desert, some place that nobody knows about. I, I want to be famous not Philip the Evangelist. God said, go to the desert. Philip the Evangelist, he arrived in a deserted place where no one was. And all of a sudden, he saw a chariot coming by. And there was a man in the chariot from Ethiopia. Ethiopia is in Africa, by the way, the continent of Africa. And uh, Philip, God told Philip, Go talk to that man. It was one person. Folks, let me ask you a question. If God called you to leave a big city, a well-known place, and go for one person's sake, would you do it? Well, Philip did. The Bible says in Acts 8, he ran to this man at that chariot. He was so excited to preach the gospel, he ran to talk to the man. And I'm not going to read you the whole story, folks, but he winds up leading that man to Christ. And I'll tell you what, the man was from Ethiopia. That man went home to Ethiopia as a, a Christian. A lot of people think, please listen carefully, a lot of people think that man of Ethiopia was the first person to go to the continent of Africa, which is where he was from, and bring the gospel. So think about it. Who was responsible? Probably. For the gospel reaching the continent of Africa. Well. Maybe he wasn't the first person. But Philip the evangelist played a huge role in that. So he. I'm just going to say he preached in the desert, okay? And, and you know the story now. Okay? I hope I spelled that right. I think I spelled desert, but you know what that means, desert, okay? I think it has one S. Uh, he preached in the desert to that man of Ethiopia. Now, one last thing I want to tell you about Philip the Evangelist. Now, folks, maybe you think I'm going to write martyred. <laughs> well, I know I just said that a while ago, that everybody pretty much was. I don't know if he was. I can't find it in history. If you find it, please let me know. But this man disappears almost from the book of Acts. He just, all of a sudden, he's gone. I, I tell you why. Because Beginning in the next chapter, God saves the Apostle Paul. So the book is then following Paul's life. But all of a sudden in Acts 21, Philip the Evangelist reappears. We're told that at that point he's living in a city called Caesarea. And the Apostle Paul and his team of partners, they're coming through Caesarea. And they go to the home of Philip the Evangelist. And they stay with him. Okay? Um, 
overnight or for the weekend, I'm not sure, but he invites them into his home and he takes care of Paul and his missionary team. So that's the last thing that we know from Scripture. I don't really know how to word that. Um, I'm just going to say that he housed Paul's team. Okay? He housed Paul's team. I don't really know how to say it, meaning he brought them in, he entertained them, he, he took care of them for at least a night, okay? So that tells you about his heart for the gospel. Remember, he ran to preach the gospel. Now he is inviting the gospel preachers into his home. So folks, that's going to be the end of our video today. Who do you feel more inspired by? This is a good one. This is a really good one here. Do you feel more inspired by a man who witnessed the life of Jesus? Who probably was trained by John the Baptist? Who became the 12th apostle and gave his life for the gospel? Or Philip the Evangelist, one of the first seven deacons? who went to Samaria, preached to a man of Ethiopia in the desert, and then invited Paul and his team into his home. This is a good vote. Please cast your vote by putting a comment on this video or by texting me or Miss Sabrina. So thank you so much for tuning in today. We'll see you tomorrow. And tomorrow we will be looking at Matthew and Mark. So we'll see you then. Have a great day. God bless you.